GoForTheTwo.com in with the week three predictions. Before I get into this breakdown of this video in the SEC, Auburn, Kentucky, this Saturday, September 26th, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern. 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern college football today. I'll be on. I'll be breaking down all the top 25 battles, give you my best selections for the weekend, also give you some under-the-radar picks this coming weekend, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern, Sling TV, Roku, SportsGrid.com, SportsGrid.com, or now in the Tri-State area, you can catch us on MSG Network, MSG Plus, Tri-State area, MSG Plus, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern this coming Saturday. Then from 12 to 5, I'll be on in-game live once the 12 o'clock and 1.30 games kick off. I'll be taking you straight through to the 6, uh, six o'clock action from the in-game wagering perspective. I'll be talking about the game analysis. I'll try to give you my best objective opinion about what I see playing out as these games progress. We'll also talk about the line movement from the sports book as these games are going through first quarter through the fourth quarter. So stay with us on in-game live 12 to 5 p.m. Eastern on sportsgrid.com. Sportsgrid.com now on MSG Plus. MSG Plus this coming Saturday starts at 10 a.m. Eastern with college football today. So check it out. Let's talk about this game on the Plains in Auburn. Auburn opened up as a nine and a half point favorite. It's now down to seven and a half in most books Tuesday night, September 22nd. So shop around, make sure you get the best line available uh, as you go out. Right now, FanDuel does have the best line here in New Jersey. So check it out. Let's talk about both teams. Let's look at Kentucky last year, 8-5 and five under Stoops. A dynamic effort. Their quarterback, Terry Wilson, went down in week one with an Achilles tendon tear. He is back for this matchup. That gave way to former wide receiver and draft pick of the Las Vegas Raiders, Lynn Bowden, taking over uh, at the helm. He was a 1,200-yard rusher. He also led the team with 31 receptions. He, it was a dominant run-heavy offense last year. For Kentucky, they averaged 278 rushing yards per game. They wore down opposing defenses at the point of attack. Asim Rose, the leading rusher behind Lynn Bowden, does come back for uh, the 2020 campaign. He's an athletic runner, has great vision, great cutback ability, and he'll be leading this offense in uh, this matchup against Auburn. So check it out. When you look at the offensive line for Kentucky, very big very physical. They average around 315 pounds per man on the fr on the front, and that's going to be the matchup going up against a faster, quicker defensive front in Auburn in this matchup. When I look at Kentucky, I break it down this way. Terry Wilson comes back from an Achilles tendon. We don't know what to expect in terms of the quarterback to wide receiver relationship in terms of timing. He hasn't had a lot of practice. We don't know about the stability of that Achilles tendon at this point. Where is Kentucky's offense? We know what we're going to get. They're going to try and run the football down Auburn's throat and then work off a of play action, and that's going to be the game plan to stay in manageable third down situations. On the flip side, we have a new offense under a former Arkansas and SMU head coach, Chad Morris, that is now the new offensive coordinator for the Auburn Tigers. This was an Auburn offense that did average 199 rushing yards per game. Their quarterback, Bo Nix, did complete 57% of his passes, threw for over 2,500 yards, 16 touchdowns, 6 interceptions, a battle-tested quarterback that got very critical road wins in 2019. It started week number one with the comeback victory over Oregon. Also led a dominant road win over Kellen Mond in Kyle Field in College Station and then did get the Iron Bowl victory over Mac Jones and Alabama at home. So this was, this kid played very well, progressed from the start of the season to the end of the season, and I really think he's ready to take the next step with Chad Morris's offense in 2020. Does have two solid running backs in Sean Shivers and DJ Williams, more of a thunder and lightning type of duo. Shivers is 5'9", around 179, wants to catch the edge, He's a guy that once he catches the football, he can take it from point A to point B in a flash. DJ Williams does his damage between the A and B gaps. He's a grounder and pounder. Doesn't go down after the first 
a tackle, and that's going to be the matchup to see in terms of Auburn. Do they utilize a lot of motion or multiple formations to confuse the Kentucky secondary? And I think that's where Auburn does have an edge in the passing game going up against Kentucky's defense. Now, I know Kentucky's defense is solid under Stoops. Last year, in terms of run support, they only allowed 157 rushing yards per game. On the road or on a neutral uh, field site, that number was 210 rushing yards. When you look at some of the bigger offensive lines in the SEC last year, teams like South Carolina, Georgia, Mississippi State, Kentucky allowed over 200 rushing yards per game, and I think that's the matchup as well from the Auburn rushing attack. They're going to want to run the football to wear down Kentucky's front seven in this ballgame. When you look at the secondary for Kentucky, one of the top secondaries in the nation last year, they held opposing quarterbacks to 167 passing yards per game, only allowed nine passing touchdowns, forced eight interceptions, and only allowed 6.2 yards per pass play. Have two uh, dynamic uh, secondary players in Joseph and Eccles, and they're going to try and force Bo Nix to beat them over the top. But I still think I give the edge to Auburn's physical and athleticism, physicality and athleticism on the edge in this ballgame. When you look at the defense for Auburn, what can you say? Big Cat Brian spearheads that defense. He goes about 6'5", 260 in this matchup. He can run sideline to sideline. K.J. Britt and Derek Hall, their linebackers, are physical at the point of attack, very Solid in terms of run support. Smoke Monday in the secondary. This was an Auburn secondary that only allowed 58% uh, percent completion percentage to opposing quarterbacks. Kentucky's a good team. They're not an elite team. And I still think that Auburn could be one of the best teams in the SEC West this year. I think Auburn starts fast and dominates Kentucky in this matchup by 10 points or more. I actually think it's about a 14 to 17 point win for the Tigers, week number one at home on the Plains.